Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're going to continue our Table Talk series. Last week, we covered the Stabilator in our systems discussion on the UH-60. This week, we're going to be talking about regs and pubs, and more specifically, we are going to cover special use airspaces. So, as a reminder, or if this is your first time hearing about special use airspace, you have prohibited areas, restricted areas, warning areas, alert areas, military operation areas, temporary restricted flight areas, national security areas, and controlled firing areas. And that should uh, cover all of the special use airspaces. Now, <clears throat> This is a topic that can be easily overlooked and it can come back to bite you in a check ride or um, some type of table talk discussion with an IP. Um, if you're in Army flight school, which a lot of my audience is, um, it will probably definitely come up in your P2 check ride, potentially throughout instruments, uh, maybe even BWS, but at some point it will definitely come up in flight school and it's not really talked about, to be honest with you, until that day the IP in front of you asks you about it and you're expected to know it. Um, and if somehow it doesn't come up at flight school, it will definitely come up at your unit um, because you're operating in airspace where you are involved in these special use airspaces all the time. They happen all the time. And if you're a civilian pilot or flying, um, in civilian aviation, you need to understand these too. Um, so what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to try to go through these um, as briefly but still thoroughly as possible so everybody walks away with a decent understanding of them. Trust me, one day it's going to happen to you. You're going to be sitting down at a table, looking an IP right in the eyes, and he's going to pull out a VFR sectional on you. He's going to just whip it out, set it right on the desk in front of you, and he's going to point at a random marking on that map, and he's going to say, can I fly in this area right here? And, well, if you watch this video, or if you dug into the AIM, and read about special use airspace, hopefully you're gonna be able to answer these questions. When in doubt, always refer to the legend. So number one, prohibited area. Can we fly in a prohibited area? In the example on this VFR sectional that I've provided you, you have prohibited area five, six, Alpha and Bravo, and if you recognize that, that is in Washington, D.C., and you, you'll notice it's actually over the White House, and uh, I'm sure uh, some other monument or um, that actually might be Arlington Cemetery. I'm not sure. Anyways, these are examples of prohibited areas. And it doesn't take much explanation to understand why they are prohibited areas. Um, you cannot fly there. They are in place for national security, and it absolutely doesn't make sense to want to overfly the White House. Um, and it's easy under, to understand why it is a prohibited area. So it doesn't take much elaboration. This is a great example of a prohibited area. Next, we have restricted areas. In the example I've provided you, you will see restricted area 3602 Alpha and restricted area 3602 Bravo. Um, can you fly in a restricted area? Actually, you can as long as you have permission from the controlling agency. As a matter of fact, I fly in restricted areas all the time. And if you're a military pilot, you do as well. Um, typically, you'll put it on your 1801 that you're going to fly into this restricted area. When you get up and you get on the radio with the controlling agency, 
um, you will tell them what you are entering the uh, restricted area for. A lot of times they will already know because they have your flight plan. They will issue you a squat code to put in your transponder. You will input that squat code in your transponder and then as you're flying around in that restricted area, oftentimes you will obviously talk to the controlling agency um, periodically while you're in there and they can also see you on your transponder based off that squat code they gave you. Um, and then when you exit the restricted area, you will either go back to a VFR squat code or if you're transitioning to instruments, whatever the situation is, you will um, do whatever is appropriate for that situation. But the short answer is yes, with permission from a controlling agency. Next, we have a military operations area, also known as a MOA or an MOA. The example I've provided you is the Rose Hill MOA, and if you're a student at Rucker, that um, MOA looks very familiar to you um, because it is at Fort Rucker. Um, <clears throat> the purpose of an MOA is to separate IFR traffic from um, military activities going on in the MOA. The short answer to if you can fly through it or not is yes, you can. Um, if you are on a IFR flight plan, the controlling agency that is controlling your aircraft <clears throat> will vector you around it or above it or through it if they know um, that there's no activity going on in that area. However, if you are VFR and you are a non-participating aircraft, <clears throat> you can still fly through a MOA. It's just highly encouraged to call the flight service station nearby to understand what types of activities are going on in the, th these MOAs because they can be very hazardous to non-participating aircraft that may be flying through them. So <clears throat> the short answer, yes, you can fly through an MOA. However, um, you need to call the flight service station and understand the activities that are going on in those areas. Um, and if you're on an IFR flight plan, the controlling agency will vector you around it or go through it depending on the activity level. Next, we have a warning area. Warning areas are typically located three nautical miles off the coast. Um, in the example I've provided, this one's located off the coast of Florida. And although it is not prohibited to fly through a warning area, um, it can be very hazardous uh, for non-participating aircraft. Um, it's, the AIM says uh, warning areas contain activities that may be hazardous to non-participating aircraft. The purpose of such warning areas is to warn non-participating pilots of the potential danger. So I would take that as I would never fly through a hot warning area. Um, you could view this through NOTAMs. You could check with ATC if you are in doubt. But um, if you just have to fly through one, you need to make sure that it is cold. Next, we have alert areas. Can you fly through an alert area? Yes, you can fly through an alert area. These alert areas are in place and depicted on sectionals to inform non-participating pilots of areas that may contain high volume of pilot training or unusual aerial activity. Pilots should be particularly alert when flying through these areas. So yes, you can. However, you need to be alert, uh, be listening to the radio, um, airspace surveillance, the whole nine yards when transiting through an alert area. Next, we have temporary flight restriction. These special use airspaces uh, pop up 
randomly due to VIP transportation, some type of special event, sporting event, um, whatever. They are ad hoc. They, they pop up randomly and you will not know about them unless you go and check notums before you depart. There's been many stories where uh, young pilots and even senior pilots have taken off and overflown some type of government conference or something and next thing you know F-16s are scrambling on a Cessna 172. So do not let one of these embarrassing events happen to you. Check your notams. Make sure there are no temporary flight restrictions. Next we have National Security Areas, also known as NSAs. As the name suggests, no, you cannot fly through them. Um, the AIM says pilots are asked to voluntarily avoid them, um, but that, that could be taken as don't fly through them. Um, so if you are asked, um, don't fly through them. Simple as that. Next, we have controlled firing areas. This is where uh, they do missile launches, rocket launches, uh, any artillery training that could be hazardous to non-participating aircraft. Now, they're not depicted on sectionals. Uh, these controlled firing areas will have a controlled lookout in place whether that be an aircraft, a radar system, um, an actual man tower to look out and if a aircraft is approaching the controlled firing area, they just cease fires, they cease all operations, and then once the aircraft has safely made it through, they um, then resume their training. But again, they're not depicted, so it, it's kind of hard to um, avoid something that's really not depicted or um, you don't know about it, but um, they have that lookout control in place so that it does keep you in the air safe. So that's going to do it for tonight. So again, we covered the eight special use airspaces, prohibited areas, restricted areas, MOAs, warning areas, alert areas, temporary flight restrictions, NSAs, and controlled firing areas. Um, I wanted to be quick and give you guys a quick rundown. That way when you're having those quick cram studying nights where you just need an answer immediately, hopefully this video does a good job in delivering that product to you guys. Um, like promise, we are going to continue this series um, not sure what the topic next week will be, but, um, uh, I'll have something in the works. I've been getting some great suggestions from you guys and, uh, please keep those comments coming. I, I love them. They help me out. They let me know what you guys want to hear about. So please keep that up. Thank you so much for the support and, uh, fly safe.